It feels great, uh, but bittersweet too. I'm going to miss uh, people and uh, events like this. You know, there's such a thrill when we premiere a new film, particularly one in, on the scale of this one, and I will miss that definitely. It's good to be here. I love working with Matthew. Uh, he is a, a, a terrific filmmaker, has a unique voice, certainly passionate about his craft and about the films that he makes. And he was a, just a, a, a great partner. I hope we were great partners to him. Well, this film is you know, very, very interesting because it, you know, it, it, it really is the setup for the two films that we've already seen. Uh, and there's a lot of heavy lifting to that, along with all the historical references to it. But I think he did a fine job not only setting up the premise of what we know will come, but of uh, portraying the world at that time. And I think it makes for quite an interesting movie. Oh, mate, it's like the iconic location, really, in the UK to show, to premiere your film. So I'm just so thrilled. It's been a long time coming, so it's really exciting to share it in this kind of glamorous way. Um, can't wait. So Polly is the nanny, the kind of matriarch of the Oxford household. She really is the sort of emotional glue and backbone um, of the story, and she keeps all of her men in check. Um, the Duke and Conrad and she really is like the brains behind the operation really um, there's more to her than meets the eye as we find out as the film goes on and um, she's incredibly clever she's um, she's got a kind of genius brain um, very uh, <laughs> calculating um, and but also she's fun she's warm she 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 gives that kind of feminine um, injection of femininity into this quite male dominated world as well and um, and I think she's a very lovable character so hopefully we'll see more of her in the next one. Oh wow well I've been a massive fan of Matthew Vaughan for years I think he's got such a singular voice in the film industry and um, yeah I was just thrilled to work with him he knows what he wants he's a visionary director he's got such a great sense of style and taste and um, and it was great working with him. It, he was such an actor's director as well. He, gave, he let us do what we wanted to do and play. And yeah, we had an amazing cast on this. It really was um, everywhere you looked, uh, just the most incredible cast. I remember at one point I had a scene with Alison Steadman, who for me is like one of the reasons I wanted to be an actress. And, and she has kind of a small part in this. And I was just overwhelmed by <laughs> the quality of the cast. Um, so, uh, you know, headed by Ray Fiennes, of course, who is, you know, you know, a master, masterful actor. So it was wonderful. I, I was, you know, I was pinching myself every day and trying to act very cool, but not succeeding. So. <laughs> So I think people love the Kingsman's films because there's real cheek in them, there's humour, there's wit, there's that kind of British eccentricity and flair and um, the characters are really memorable. I guess with this film, obviously it's, it's based a hundred years before the original film, so there's, uh, obviously it's a period film with real historical events which were pretty hefty and uh, awful and so this film has more of a serious tone, there's a lot more emotion in this film which I think sets it apart you really feel the feelings um, but we you know establish why the Kingsmen were, fo were formed um, which is a really satisfying thing to learn if you like the original film so yeah it's different but got that same sort of style to it. It's very exciting because uh, it because <laughs> it's become such an unusual event so uh, it would be nice if um, everyone came out to the cinema like they used to and saw this amazing cinematic sort of uh, roller coaster of a film which deserves to be seen a hundred foot wide and 40 feet high if possible. The, the three characters I play all have very distinct personalities so uh, I just had to remember which one I was doing but it wasn't that difficult after four hours in makeup to know which one I was supposed to be. It depended on the mood I was in. One was, one was sad, one was uh, always in a good mood and complete narcissist uh, and one was quite sensible and I can definitely veer between those three things so uh, I would just uh, hope to be in the appropriate mood for the character I was playing. Fun, a lot of fun. Uh, the cast is, a, is a, a very sweet group of people and we all seem to get on very well and Matthew is a real force of nature. I didn't know him and uh, he's a very very impressive man uh, and just full of drive and creativity and which is all on the screen. Uh, if you see it, the, just the energy, that is all him.
uh, amazing. Well, I think they can expect the humour and the madcapness and the brilliance of the first two, but this is also has a lot of darkness in it because he's taken, you know, he's taken the Kingsman spirit and put it into a real historical event, which was the First World War, which was obviously a very dark and painful time. Uh, so, in the same way that Zelig and Forrest Gump, you know, take a character you know and plop them into history, and you follow it, you see it through their eyes. We're looking at the First World War through the, the Kingsman fraternity, which is a, a strange thing. So it goes through different tones. It's original Kingsman spirit, but then it takes you to other places. It's all sorts of different moods come up at different times. It twists and turns and takes you by surprise again and again. Fans can expect uh, to laugh, to be stunned into silence, uh, to be and to be amazed. Uh, it's a relief. It's been three years since we shot the movie. Um, I'm thrilled that it's going to be in a cinema. I haven't even seen the film in a cinema. I haven't ever watched it with people. I'm going to be like a pure fan because I can hardly remember the movie. It's been so long. Um, but I think uh, we will have to fight to keep cinema alive and hopefully this will help cinema stay where it needs to be. Well, the actual story was in Kingsman Secret Service when Harry Hart explained to Eggsy how Kingsman was born and what and why and when and then I saw a movie called The Man well re saw a movie called uh, The Man Who Would Be King and I thought why don't we do The Man Who Would Be Kingsman and decided to make an epic sort of historical adventure and it fit, fitted Kingsman and I wanted to go back to the movies that I loved as a kid and try and make it for a modern audience. Uh, difficult really difficult because you know we couldn't change history and history wasn't necessarily designed for the structure of a screenplay but we got there we just had to take the challenge of historical events and interweave a fun fictional story around some very serious moments dream come true they were all a delight they're all brilliant actors they all brought so much more to their characters and that was written and I learned a lot from them and I hope I get to do another movie with them they were great the cast was a dream come true Literally. It was shot with old lenses. It was designed for, um, it was designed for the app, app. we used, literally used the lenses that Lawrence Arabia was shot on, rebuilt the damn things, kept breaking. Um, but we shot it for a widescreen experience, not for a telephone iPad experience. So uh, when you go, you do fall into the screen and it envelops you and I hope people, it's worth going to the cinema to see it, it really is. But the fans can, the fans can expect uh, an epic, engaging entertainment.